Father, thank you for today. Give you the praise and the glory for your presence in our lives. We thank you so much for your constant patience, long-suffering, steadfast love, and never giving up. In the name of Jesus, we yield to you today. Amen. Amen. Welcome, mother and father. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, I just jotted down a few notes today, but one of them. There is a difference between going to church and surviving the week and being the church and making the week. That was just a little thought that popped in my head this morning. So let every day be an adventure in God. You know, a lot of times it's easy to go running and says, where are you at today? <laughs> but, but he's always there. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's always there. Uh, the word incarnate. Anybody want to give me a definition of incarnate? No? Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Incarnate. In the flesh, it's uh, especially of a deity or a spirit embodied in flesh, in human form, God incarnate. And then in the verb part, embody or represent a deity or spirit in human form. The idea that God incarnates himself in man. And so, you know, that's um, Romans 8. And 26. Let's go there. If you like. If you don't like, I'll read it and you can listen to it. Good morning. God bless you for coming this morning. That's okay. You can cross yourself. Dominos, dominos, dominos. My father plays dominos better than yours. That was free. <laughs> Oh, we're at Romans 8, Mary, in case you wondered. Romans 8 and 26. Oh, they have it up on. Oh, there's a wondrous operator of the machines in the back. <laughs> yep, the joy of the Lord is my strength. <laughs> Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groaning which, groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are um, to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed into the image of the son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover whom he predestined those he also called whom he called these he also justified and whom he justified these he glorified I'm just going off on the thought of the firstborn among many brethren. The question came up this week uh, in a group that I'm a part of that how is Christ incarnate today? And the first thought that came into my mind was when I walk outside the door and go out into the world. That's how Christ is incarnated today. When, when, we, as the, he, when he died and was rose again, it says here he was the firstborn among many brethren. And with Jesus living on the inside of us, the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us, God himself living on the inside of us, then wherever we walk, it is Jesus incarnate in the flesh. 
You know what I mean? And a lot of times the things of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things, persecutions, afflictions, for the word's sake, and that wasn't just the written word, that's for the word's sake. He is the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So that was the incarnate word and dwelt among us. And he says, you guys now, I'm going to go away. It's better that I go away, so I'll send you the Holy Ghost. He's going to live in you. He's going to be your helper. He's going to be your, your comforter, the paracletos. And we're go he's going to work with you, confirming the word with signs following. So believers in that name, they cast out the devil. They speak with new tongues. They drink any deadly thing. It will not hurt them. They go about doing good, just like Jesus did, healing all who are oppressed of the devil. You know, that's where, when you begin to think about it and drill down, it's so easy. The devil will throw those things in your life to get you off of who you really are and get you into who you're really not. Because the old man is supposed to be dead. If we go on down, the, there's a scripture that says, You are in the world, but you're not of the world. And the promises of God are in, in him are yes and amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. You know... I'll just stop with that one. I'm going to read the whole on down through 21. But there are opportunities throughout the week for people to tick you off. You know what I'm talking about? You've got opportunities all the time for people to tick you off or for judgment to rise up on the inside of you and judge that person as a scumbag. You know what I mean? Worm spawn. All kinds of different things. You can think up all kinds of different names for the people that you encounter throughout the week. But the Bible says right here, from therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Because the Bible says... You know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would have everlasting life. And the Bible says while we were yet in sin, while we were yet in sin, Christ died for us. So anyway, therefore from now on we regard no one according to the flesh even though we have known christ according to the flesh yet now we know him thus no longer therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation old things have passed away behold all things have become new did you know jesus never walked around at all saying you need to know jesus He was, he was revealing the Father. He was the embodiment of God. And he was presenting the Father. He says, Philip, have I been so long with you that you did not know? That if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And if we think in terms of what it means to incarnate Christ today, then that means that Everywhere we go, we would be seen as revealing the Father. And it just, you know, it's, it's, it kind of makes you think sometimes, how am I revealing the Father Monday through Saturday? You know, how am I revealing the Father? And, and if... It says in 1 John that God is love. There is no fear in the perfect love of God. Perfect, fear has torment, but perfect love casts out all fear. 
when we're, when we're walking around, we can either come into agreement with the world that everything is totally fear-based right now. The news media is completely fear-based. All of this stuff is fear-based. Trying to get you worked up in some form or fashion. But the perfect love of God casts out all fear. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconcilia reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. Do you know that, that in this world, we can be identified as an electrician, as a plumber, as, as um, a Republican or a Democrat, as an independent, as a used car salesman, as college professor, as whatever. But those, those are just identifiers of, of what we might do, but not of who we are. You know? And the identifiers of who we are should be prevalent in the world today as we walk about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. That's what, I mean, I think about it because many times I'm very uncomfortable around Christians that try to witness. You know, because I feel pressure. I feel pressure. I feel the, the knife coming out and the other notch on the gun belt getting ready to be cut in there and everything like that. I feel no love. I feel no real concern. I feel Jesus trying to be rammed down my throat. I feel religious. That was good, Mary. I feel religious. But, but in the relationship of God, if we are truly ambassadors... This is spiritual growth class, so I'm just thinking about how, we, how I'm growing. You know what I mean? If we're, if we're ambassadors, then we're representing the kingdom of God wherever we go. We don't represent the United States of America. We're in the United States of America, but we're really not of the United States of America. We can grow to and, and, and be, be part of the United States of America. We can do what the rules say to be a good citizen in the United States of America, but we represent the kingdom of the Most High God. And we, this word says that we're ambassadors in that kingdom. And that means all of heaven's resources are backing us up wherever we go as an ambassador in the kingdom of God. We've got ambassadorial privileges. You go and begin to look at how the United States of America treat, re, treats representatives of other countries coming here, and they get a motorcade, they get fancy cars, they get they get uh, their 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 um, amba embassy. Their embassy is off limits to United States law. You know what I mean? That means they're they're a little their embassy is like a little nation in within our nation. The police don't stop the ambassador from another country and write him a ticket. There's just different things that are involved. This is not a license to go out and break the law. Other there have been some that have tried to do that and tried to um, push their thoughts on different situations and they might get asked to leave the country because they have broken the law and things like that and you can get deported and, and different things like that. But in our trek, in this living this life in Jesus Christ, living 
living and we're all we're all growing in this you know this is a this is a growth pattern for all of us because but what i'm saying today hopefully this week there'll be opportunities for it to just ring a bell and say but i'm not going to judge this guy after the flesh jesus died for him you know i get i get tired of hearing all the echoes of talking points on both sides, you know what I mean? Because so many people want to identify themselves with a talking point. And I, I really want to be identified as a person that loves people. You know what I mean? That people can feel comfortable. I had a conversation not too long ago with a... With a uh, well, it was a person through a second party because the second party was asked to ask me what I thought about what was going on. And the second party was in the background. <laughs> and the second party exploded when they heard what I thought, you know. And the F-bombs started flying all over the place and all kinds of stuff going. And you see, this is where the devil would like to relegate you to a silent majority and have you shut up you know and I, I have to, you have to choose to love people like that you just choose to love them they're walking in their ignorance they're just an echo that's all they are and I desire to be a voice and as we're walking in ambassadorship in the kingdom of God, we become a voice for the kingdom of God. You know what I mean? And, and we don't have to throw a message down the throats of people. We become the message to the people. You know what I mean? Because if, it, if in him we live and move and have our being, the question should arise from outside sources how do you handle the way you handle? Because everybody else is about ready to pull their hair out in a lot of circumstances, or they're just so much in autopilot, they just get up in the morning, put on their clothes, put on their shoes, do what they got to do, eat breakfast, go to work, do what they got to do to survive a job that they don't want to be there on, and come home, flip on the news, eat dinner, kick back a bit, dread tomorrow, and get up and do it all over again. And they call that living. I've told this before, but in Africa, in some of the tribes, they get up in the morning, women go and walk for miles and gather sticks, Another group of women walk for miles with buckets and go get water. And the men go walk for miles and look for food. And they all meet back at night. And they get the sticks together and they start a fire and boil the water and cook the food that the men made, brought home. And they all eat and go to bed and get up and do it all the next day. And they call that living. But a funny thing was, Steve List told me, he grew up in South Africa. And people would come and visit because they were in a remote area. And he, the people would say, oh, it's too bad that you're so poor. And Steve said, we didn't know we were poor. We were having fun running barefoot through the bush <laughs> and being able to be just kids in Africa. You know what I mean? We didn't know we were poor. It's all in the, in the, in, in who are you comparing yourself to? You know what I mean? And a lot of times we compare ourselves to different people, different people we see on TV or different people. And there's a whole marketing program out there to get you to compare yourself to that person on the television so you'll buy that product to where you look like that person on the television. 
And I've been in churches where, where men compare themselves to the pastor, and all of a sudden you got a lot of cookie-cutter pastors running around. They all dress like him. They all comb their hair like him. If he's got a beard, they grow a beard. If they, they're, they're all just look like he's walking around with an entourage of lookalikes. And you think that's, that's sad, really, but it's the truth. I've seen it happen, and I've, I've been in, I have not tried to do that. I got a rude awakening early in this Christian walk that I did not want to look like or talk like Kenneth Copeland, you know. And so these are things that, that you know, you be the message. You don't try to look like somebody's message. You're incarnating Christ. You're incarnating the Father. You're incarnating the love of God to a lost world. You know? And sometimes that calls for a little disruption. Well, I don't want to raise any waves. I don't know, somebody dying on a store floor and you walk up and raise them from the dead? That would cause some disruption. But that's part of going about doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil. You know, these are just things to think about just in your own spiritual growth, because I think that um, it's it's just important. It says in Hebrews 12, verse one, it says, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, people that have gone on before that have run their race in in Timothy, <clears throat> Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've run the race, I've fought a good fight, I've finished the course, now is laid before me a crown of righteousness and to all those that love his appearing. He, he finished the course. And here it says, we've surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin." I wrote down this note, it was, it was passion that drove Jesus to the cross. The passion for me and you. We were the joy that was set before him. And we can be the incarnate Christ to the world and make his joy full. Amen? I think I'll leave you with that and give you a few minutes to... I don't have to milk this whole thing out to the end. <laughs> Father, we thank you for today. Give you the praise for your presence, Lord God. We thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. And that, Lord God, let us just be examples of the possibilities in God. I thank you for it, Father. I thank you so much for never giving up on us for leading us and guiding us into all truth by the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen.